This is Eat, Sleep, Invest, the marketing podcast for real estate investors to get more deals. Okay, and then so what this means for investors, because I was lo- I was checking your software out, and uh, I was actually looking in my neighborhood. So I'm an investor myself. Yep. I do long term rentals, and I'm in the suburbs. And I was I was wondering on the Air- Airbnbs, it's like who's going to rent out here? And I looked up. There's two properties in my in my zip code that are renting with an 80 percent occupancy, and they're making like 50 grand income in a year versus monthly rents are like 1,300 a month. Which so that kind of data, like yeah. you can't find that data anywhere else, right? So we're tracking I mean, roughly twelve million listings around the world. Um, we're estimating the daily occupancy and ADR of each of those listings. So looking at calendar movement, so what days are available in the calendars? When do they go unavailable? What rates they're available for? Um, and and the revenue associated with every single one of those bookings. We then have that sort of in our database. Uh, and then we've created tools like Rentalizer, which is probably the one that you were looking at, where you can input any address in the world. And we're going to go out and find comparable properties. So being in the long-term rentals, I'm, I'm sure you're you're comfortable with comps. Right. Like you got to find relevant comps. So Rentalizer is our tool for finding those relevant comps. So we're going to go out and look for properties that are si- similar bedroom, bathroom counts, uh, nearby your location, um, similar price tiers. Uh, so is it a luxury home? Uh, so we're going to go out and find luxury comps um, or is it a budget home um, the like? Uh, and then uh, bring back what we see those properties earning on an annualized basis um, and, and show those. And that is by far our most popular tool. Uh, we get tens of thousands of searches every day of people looking to um, let's say they're looking to buy a home, they've got an existing home, they've got an existing long-term rental, and are thinking about bringing them to the short-term rental ecosystem, and we could help them get comfortable with what that earning potential is. Yeah. So what are you seeing in this market? Like, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy right now with ups and downs. Yeah, it's been... <laughs> so in the commercial real estate sector, we, and we looked at cycles, and like the average cycle was like 10 years, right? And where you'd see the peaks, the valleys, uh, for short-term rentals, we have seen an entire cycle in a three-year period um, where we just saw a, a complete uh, collapse of demand in March 2020 um, with the onset of COVID. Um, I had occupancies reached all-time lows. It was like, it was dark days in March and April and May when we just didn't know what was going to happen. Travel sort of came to a stop. But then really quickly, people started to get out again and they wanted to travel. They weren't necessarily willing to stay in a uh, hotel. So they looked to short-term rentals and we saw it demand sort of come back really strongly and mountain coastal sort of rural destinations. Uh, uh, all the while supply just almost entirely left. If you had a second home, you could work remote from that second home. And we saw I mean, um, supply in the cities, a lot of short-term rentals convert back to long-term rentals. Uh, so supply, about 30, 40% of supply of short-term rentals in the U.S. just disappeared overnight. Um, we have now exceeded that supply, but well exceeded it in terms of demand. Um, and occupancies hit record highs uh, in 2021. They've come down a bit um, as more supply has been coming on and we've been seeing, we saw about 25% supply growth um, as an industry in the U.S. in 2022. Um, and that has pulled occupancies down a bit, but we're still and much higher than we were at uh, pre-COVID levels. Yeah, now, and that, that 25% is crazy in one year. That's a, that's a big number. And in some markets, like you look at a market like uh, Dallas or Houston, supply is up 50% year over year. Yeah, and that's crazy too, because then yeah, you're trying to rent. There aren't enough people. Yeah, the occupancy rates are going to go down. Yeah, and that's I mean the occupancy levels in 2021, I mean they were magnitude higher because demand had come back, supply hadn't come back yet, so there was so much scarcity. Uh, people are able to raise rates. Uh, they were just seeing record returns uh, for this sector. Um, and that created a lot of people that were maybe interested in doing short-term rentals for the first time. Um, and that's, 
um, led to a lot of new people coming in, a lot of supply coming in. And, and I would say it's more a reversion back to more normal return expectations uh, that right. we're seeing today. Um, and I, we are some people seeing some people getting hurt by that. So if you underwrote in 2021, expecting those levels to sort of maintain forever, I'm, you're now I'm maybe a bit uh, disappointed in, in, in how the industry is performing since then. Yeah, and I think that might be uh, industry-wide too. Like even flippers, I know a lot of them were underwriting also for the higher values and they get stock. Same on this. If you don't, you always got to be conservative. You know, because what goes up comes down usually. Yeah, and that's where, and that's where having the long time series of data really helps. So those rentalizer estimates we were talking about, those es essentially are assuming past year's performance. Um, but that's where you might want to go in and like, all right, the occupancy level that AirDNA told me for this unit today is going to earn, let's say, 60%. Uh, but then if I look back through time, I, my market's still generating 10% higher occupancies than it was in 2018, 2019. Maybe I should underwrite some downside risk there, or at least make sure that the deal still works if occupancy's dropped another 10%. Right. So, and that brings up a, a, a question I have for you. So, what what do we say like the top two or three problems that investors are trying to solve when they come to your site? Like, if you have all the data, what are the, what are the top couple things they're trying to find out? Yeah. I'm, one is uh, annual earning potential, um, and that tool I mean, is by far most popular. Uh, the second is I am understanding the the seasonality of their market, um, how they should then once they have that listing, um, um, how are cash flows going to play out th uh, throughout the year? Uh, so unlike long term rentals where you have a very consistent cash flow coming in every month. Shorter rentals are going to be entirely different, uh, where you're going to have a high season, a low season, um, and let's say you're you're buying a listing at the uh, start of the high season, and it you have it coming in, it's just cash flowing every month. You're you, <laughs> you're like I made the best decision ever. Uh, then once you get to November uh, and everyone starts traveling, you've got to have the sort of reserve saved up. So you can cover your expenses through the slow season. Um, so I'm understanding how to budget for that property throughout the entire year on what the revenues are going to be. And then also on pricing. So we provide pricing tools that allow people to uh, take um, all the data that we have and redistill it into a, what you should be pricing your unit at every night so you can maximize your overall revenue. Uh, because... Uh, the band trends are really dynamic. You might have a event coming into your city that you never even knew about um, that is going to bring in travelers. I and mean, we're going to be able to pick that up. We're going to be able to see the bookings start to be coming in and say, hey, it looks like there's something coming into this market. Uh, demand I and mean, people have started booking. You need to raise your rate for this weekend and we can do all that automatically for you.